Optimism and pessimism are more than the metaphorical glass of water and whether it's half full or half empty. Rather, the optimism spectrum changes your perception of the world and the situations you find yourself in. It can change the way you think about your life and therefore how you live it. As a pessimist, you may think that you are the root cause of all your problems. You may also assume that one failure may cause your life to fall apart or even that you have no future. This sense of helplessness can cause you to feel hopeless and promote depression. On the other hand, optimists are equipped with the capability to resist these negative mindsets. Starting from the 1960s, schools and parents have been using a direct approach to improve children's self-esteem. The methods used focus on making children feel good about themselves, giving positive and encouraging feedback even if the kid is doing badly. Rather than boosting children's sense of self-worth, this has caused a significant uptick in depressed kids. The cause of this lies in where self-esteem comes from. Rather than how children feel, it is what children do that develops their self-esteem. When you master a skill, persist in trying to solve problems, face and overcome challenges, that is when your self-esteem grows. A strategy focused on making kids feel good is ultimately confusing and effectively harmful. When it boils down to it, an optimistic or pessimistic mindset affects the way you identify the causes of your problems. This is important because the cause can be seen as permanent and temporary. This then affects the way we live our lives. Pessimistic children tend to see causes to problems as being permanent. These problems will persist. Contrast this with an optimistic child. Optimistic children will see the cause as being temporary and therefore have hope that situations will improve. This makes them more resilient and less prone to depression. By observing the words your children use, you can help determine their mindset. Similarly, the way the consequences of an event are seen can have far-reaching effects. Pessimistic children see effects are being pervasive while optimistic ones find them to be specific. Self-blame is a very tough thing to handle even for adults. When it comes to children, it can determine how they see themselves and have long-term consequences on their mental health. When something goes wrong, who or what do you blame? Optimists handle self-blame in a very balanced way, taking on an accurate amount themselves and sharing it around. Conversely, pessimists tend to blame themselves. Therefore, parents should be clear when punishing children for bad behavior. Take extra care to make the connection that the punishment is an effect of the crime, not the perpetrator. As a parent, you want to help your kids to learn to manage the world. The best way to do this is by learning such skills on your own and passing them down to your kids. One way to do this is by using cognitive skills. If you're grumpy in the mornings, this might affect how you treat your children. The first thing to do then is to recognize and identify negative thoughts. Based on that behavior, you may think that you're a bad mother. First, analyze this thought. You can do this by listing how you're a good or bad mother and comparing the lists. From there, you can find the reason for your behavior. Perhaps you're just not a morning person. Then, you can work on ways to handle this behavior. Essentially, focusing on the right perception of the problem can help you to solve it. Once you master this, you can help your children to do so too. Having a positive mindset is great, but it doesn't solve problems. Children are especially impulsive, tending to be led by emotions rather than logic or thoughtfulness. However, you can help to guide them to make better choices and solve their problems. First, you must encourage your kids to slow down. By first thinking about the situation, they can have the time to cool down and think about things from someone else's point of view. After all, your child may not be the only hurt party. Next, you should determine goals or what your kid wants from the situation. Then, you can help to come up with steps to achieve that goal.